What is this man thinking? What does he feel? What will he do next? The answers to these questions are important to you, the American soldier. Your life, the security of your home and country may depend on them. For this man is your enemy or is a member of a neutral or friendly foreign group. He may carry a gun, push a plow, or run a machine to win him over, to keep him from acting hostile to us, or to sustain his friendship by means other than force. That's the job of our psychological warfare. Psychological warfare aims at vital targets, thoughts, emotions, opinions, attitudes. It attempts to influence behavior by the planned use of propaganda. Many people think of propaganda as lies and distortions used by demagogues to arouse and incite. The Nazi propaganda minister, Dr. Goebbels, did his best to help this idea along. Actually, the word propaganda has no derogatory meaning. It comes from the Latin propagare, which means simply to spread about. It was first used by the Jesuits in 1622, when they began a college of propaganda which trained missionaries to serve in distant lands. Today, as the battle for men's minds is intensified, the spreading about of our democratic faith is becoming increasingly important. Our national foreign information programs are used to support the accomplishment of our national aims and policies. And in time of war, psychological warfare is used to support the accomplishment of a military mission. This film will emphasize the military aspects of psychological warfare. The use of psychological methods to influence enemy behavior in combat is not a new concept. An Athenian commander, Themistocles, in an attempt to discourage approaching enemy troops, urged them, if they could not lay down their arms, to behave ill on purpose. Our Continental Army used this type of leaflet at Bunker Hill to arouse discontent among the poorly paid enemy troops. In the Napoleonic Wars, from ships standing off the French coast, the British launched kites bearing anti-morale leaflets. The employment of military aircraft in World War I made possible the wide dissemination of propaganda leaflets. By World War II, New advances and operational techniques moved psychological warfare into high gear, made it an integrated part of our military organization. Experience has taught us that military action alone can win, but the costs in men and materials run high. Psychological warfare, effectively used in support of combat action, can reduce casualties and cost. Intelligence, used as a basis for military psychological warfare operations, comes chiefly from interrogation of prisoners of war. Monitoring and analysis of enemy broadcasts and propaganda, captured enemy documents, and area studies. Reports are made available through G2 to the psychological warfare officer. Intelligence is studied for psychological warfare use. Enemy troop vulnerabilities are determined and plans drawn up to exploit them. There are three broad areas, tactical, strategic, and consolidation, in which psychological warfare supports the military mission. Tactical support is aimed at the civilians and enemy soldiers in the combat area. Objective, 
to remove as many as possible as hazards to our troops by reducing their combat efficiency and will to fight. One of the tactical military psychological warfare weapons is the loudspeaker. It has great mobility and can pinpoint its target. Through the loudspeaker, appeals and information based on combat intelligence can be swiftly and dramatically directed at the enemy soldier. To you soldiers of the 14th Regiment People's Army, we bring you news of home. Another tactical psychological warfare weapon is the leaflet. It may be used in a tactical situation. May be distributed by a propaganda shell fired from the 105 howitzer. Leaflets also may be distributed by tactical, strategic, and liaison aircraft. This surrender leaflet was used against the enemy in North Korea. Although surrender may be one of the products of the tactical use of psychological warfare, you cannot judge the value of a psychological warfare operation by a headcount of prisoners alone. The slow piling up of anxiety and discontent in the mind of the enemy soldier can be equally effective in reducing his combat efficiency. Cumulative effects of well-planned and executed campaigns may result in other forms of defection, such as malingering, mutiny, desertion, or sabotage. Radio may be used tactically when it is known that there are enough enemy receivers in the target area to warrant its use. The second area in which psychological warfare assists the military is strategic support. This is aimed at personnel in the rear of the combat area. Objective, to exploit behind the lines tensions, weaken the efficiency of soldiers, and increase absenteeism of civilians upon whom the success of the enemy's military operations depends. Much of the information used in strategic support operations comes from area studies. These provide basic facts about a country's national life and they offer effective themes for political, ethnic, religious, and cultural exploitation. This leaflet, used strategically against the North Korean farmers, urged them to pretend sickness and not work for the communists who are rounding up labor crews. The aim of this leaflet was to split the North Korean civilians from the communist political system by showing that their political leaders were mere puppets being pushed into war. The civilian bomb warning leaflet used in Korea tended to split the civilians from their leaders and portrayed the United Nations forces as humanitarian and just. In support of strategic operation, radio may be highly effective, limited only by the range of the transmitter and the availability of radio receivers. Psychological warfare broadcasts are flexible and can be altered swiftly to fit a changing situation. The third area in which psychological warfare assists the military is consolidation support, aimed at civilians in liberated or occupied sections. Here, psychological warfare agencies work under control of the civil affairs and military government structure. The objective, to promote maximum cooperation among the local civilian population and to facilitate military operations by helping to secure and maintain law and order. Among the first directives issued in consolidation support would be curfew regulations and bans against the possession of weapons.
Later, as consolidation progresses, psychological warfare units furnish information on functional matters such as availability of electric power, water, and other vital resources and services. Voice planes offer wide dissemination of directives and other terse consolidation information. This type of leaflet was used in support of consolidation in an attempt to clear main supply routes of French civilians during the early stages of the Normandy landings. To support the accomplishment of the military objective, Psychological warfare is provided with two main field operational units. The radio broadcast and leaflet battalion and the loudspeaker and leaflet company. The radio broadcast and leaflet battalion consists of a headquarters company, a reproduction company, a radio broadcasting company and a consolidation company and is assigned to a theater headquarters and is used mainly in support of strategic and consolidation operations. The loudspeaker and leaflet company consists of a headquarters company, publications platoon, operations platoon, and a loudspeaker platoon and is assigned to a field army and supports mainly tactical operations. The Chief of Psychological Warfare is directly responsible to the Army Chief of Staff for psychological warfare plans, operations, organization and training. The United States has no monopoly on psychological warfare. The enemy has used it against our troops. Here is an example of enemy military propaganda disseminated in a simple way. The soldier's natural longing for home is exploited in this enemy's leaflet. Darling, I will dream that you are coming back to me this Christmas. I can't think of a Christmas without you. In cooperation with your unit commander, troop information and education programs surround you with unbiased facts and learning so that you know the truth, can have confidence and faith in your mission. Every available information and education medium is used to arm you against the distortions and falsehoods of enemy psychological warfare. Your army explains the democratic principles you're fighting for, shows you your stake in the issues, keeps you up to date on what's going on at home and abroad, lets you sound off when you've got something on your mind. The enemy's psychological warfare operations lean heavily on distorting the facts. The leaflet on the left, dropped in Korea by the communists, was designed to split the American soldier from the civilians at home and attempts to show him that he is fighting for a system filled with capitalist decay. This picture was lifted by the communists from an American magazine advertising a name brand cigar and retouched to produce the glasses on the table. But the enemy's propaganda distortions have less likelihood of success against you, the American soldier. In an army devoted to freedom, you have the truth available to you. These, plus your own sense of loyalty and patriotism, are your best defenses against enemy propaganda. We have shown you some of the methods and potentialities of military psychological warfare. Its success and value to the armed forces of our country has been officially recognized by the President of the United States who has said, without doubt, psychological warfare has proven its right to a place of dignity in our military...